Hello, my name is Mark Baker. I'd like to share with you this morning some tips and tricks on it and demonstrations on how to uh, complete a Vita Dynamic crown by using light cured stains and glaze versus the polishing technique. This is an ideal way to characterize your crowns effectively and efficiently. The sprue should be removed from the enamic crown by using cut off discs or stones as normal. To condition the surfaces to be characterized of the enamic restoration, the surfaces need to be free from grease to optimize the wetting and retentive bond of the stain. The surfaces do not need to be polished prior. The surfaces should be conditioned in the following way. Here we have two options. The first option is to acid etch the surface by using a 5% hydrofluoric acid gel, such as Vita Ceramics Etch. Use a disposable brush to apply the Vita Ceramics Etch to the entire surface. Etching time is approximately 60 seconds. Once complete, now remove the residual acid by steam cleaning or ultrasonic with distilled water. The surface should appear frosted white in appearance. The alternative option is to microblast the surface with clean alumina oxide at 50 microns at a pressure of 1 to 1.5 bars. Surfaces must then be cleaned thoroughly either by steam cleaning or ultrasonic with distilled water. It is recommended to dispense the Vita VM LC cleaner into the mixing plate and using a clean brush wipe the entire surface of the crown prior to the next step of application. The cleaning solution will then evaporate in a matter of seconds and can also be air blasted to increase this speedy process. Use internal crown forceps or hemostats to securely hold the crown. Now apply silane or ceramic primer sparingly to the entire surface of the crown to be stained and glazed. Allow to dry carefully or used with caution compressed air to speed up the process. There are three individual liquid bottles included in the enamic stain kit. One, the VMLC cleaning solution. Two, the enamic stain liquid and three, the enamic glaze liquid. As the enamic stains are light cured, we dispense the enamic stain liquid onto the enclosed black, light proof mixing palette as shown. The enamic stain liquid has an internal brush to help you dispense the stain liquid. A user tip is not to displace too much liquid at once, but to dispense a small amount of liquid in front of each stain well as demonstrated. This will prevent the light liquid from setting prematurely. It is also recommended to dose the same pure stain liquid into a large well so that you can clean your brush when applying the stains later. Stains should be dispensed into the smaller wells of the palette. There are six colors to choose from. The stain powder is very intense and should be considered more a paint with the stain liquid being used as a thinner. The application differs entirely from the porcelain stain and glazing technique. To prepare the stains, it is not recommended to dispense the liquid directly into the well of the stain powder. Rather, drag some stain powder to the liquid and mix with a spatula as shown. When applying the pure stain liquid, it is recommended to cover the stain palette, preventing light polymerization of the palette's pre-mixed stains. Apply to the surface areas that you intend to characterize with pure clean stain liquid. This will help wet the surface prior to the actual application of the stain. Uncover the stain palette. Wet the brush tip in pure stain liquid and now drag a small amount of stain to the dispense liquid on the palette as shown and mixed together. Now apply the stain, in this case corn number two is applied directly to the area previously wetted. Apply thinly and evenly over the desired area. Should the stain be too intense, dilute the intensity by applying more stain liquid as shown. To clean the brush tip between the stain selections, dip the brush into the pure stain liquid to remove any excess stain and wipe with a napkin or tissue. Again, wet the brush in the pure stain liquid and apply, in this example, stain number three, brown, 
and stain number four khaki to the fissure areas. Should these stains be too intense, they can be diluted by adding more stain liquid. Or should you make a mistake, remove the stain by cleaning the brush and wiping the stain off of the restoration. The light blue number five anamic stain is applied to cusp tips and contours to improve the translucent appearance. Apply sparingly and dilute as necessary. By dipping your brush into the pure stain liquid and applying it to the color on the crown, which will thin out the appearance. We are ready to light cure and fixate the stains prior to glazing. Cure for five to six seconds as shown. Dispense a few drops of the glaze liquid onto the large palette well and apply glaze using a clean disposable micro brush. Apply the glaze in an even sweeping action from the mesial to distal in this example as shown. Continue to the palatal surfaces and if necessary apply minimally to contact areas. With caution apply the glaze to the fissure to prevent running or puddling and then cover the cusp tips with a light sweeping application. The final glaze polymerization is achieved by using a light curing device of a spectral range from between 300 and 50 nanometers to 500. Any surfaces that were missed during the initial application may be recoated at any time. Rotate the crown while light curing and depending on the, de on the device manufacturer's instructions use the most powerful setting as a minimum recommendation. This may take from anything from 30 to 60 seconds depending on the manufacturer's instruction. The desired surface should not be tacky or sticky to touch and if so continue curing for an additional 30 to 60 seconds. Additional recommendations are to use a light curing box from a laboratory light cure system and when completed the crown is now ready to be cemented.